I am going to be working on my diamond painting. So grab something that you would like to do or just simply listen while I work on this gorgeous painting and let's get started. Hey y'all, welcome to the Crafty Diamond. I am Debbie. I am going to be working on my larger diamond painting today instead of the one that I've been working on with you guys. And this one is Dragon Seasons by Emma Casey from Enablers Outpost. I have one more row after the one that I'm currently working on, and then I will be finished with summer and moving on to fall. So I'm really excited about that. I haven't had as much time to work on this as I had hoped. It has just been a really crazy busy week and weekend and just did not get a chance to diamond paint very much. And now I'm going to be leaving on Wednesday of this week, going to the Great Lakes Retreat. And I'm not taking this one with me because this one is a 50 by 235 centimeters. So that's definitely not going to fit in my suitcase. And I am going to be taking another diamond painting that I'm going to be starting on. And that one is from Bella Art Diamonds. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a pen I'm going to be using kind of in a shadow here. It's the same pen I've been using. It matches this, this diamond painting. I'm using an Add More Zest tray. I'm using Patsy Putty in my multi-placer. I'm also using Joy's Diamond Putty in another pen that I might be using if I get to any ABs in this section. And I am using a glue dot for my single placer. So first of all, how is everybody doing? Hope that you're all doing well. Hope that you had a nice weekend. It is Monday for me. And it will be Tuesday if you are watching this when it comes out. It is a little dark. It's very early in the morning, but it's also very overcast. And I didn't want to put too much of a light on here other than my light pad because I didn't want it to be too much of a glare. Right now it looks like it's okay. I'm just glancing to make sure before I really get started. But let me know how you guys are doing and what you have been up to, what you're working on. I cannot believe that I am about to go to the Great Lakes Retreat. Seems like I just went last year and I had so much fun. It was really fun meeting everybody last year and I was um, kind of quiet last year. I was kind of nervous. Didn't really know, you know, what, didn't really know that many people. And this year, I'm really looking forward to it. I know what to expect. And that always helps me. I am going to be meeting up with one of my favorite diamond painter friends. And that is Kim with Kimba's Crafts. I'm sure everybody knows her. But if you don't, I will put um, her YouTube channel underneath the description. And we are going to be rooming at the Great Lakes Retreat. And then we're also going to meet up with Rhonda, A Dip in Time. I'll put her information below as well. She was my roommate last year and we met at the airport. She actually came and found me because she had gotten there earlier and we started talking as soon as we got into the car and we didn't stop even getting at the retreat. So it was really nice getting to meet her. I really missed her. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her again and definitely looking forward to actually meeting Kim in person. That's going to be a lot of fun. We did rent a car this year, um, rather Kim is going to be, you'll be in Kim's name. She's going to be our chauffeur and we're going to help her with navigation 
And if you know me very well, I am absolutely horrible with directions. So no telling where we're going to end up. Hope she's not exactly relying on me. Um, we have GPS on our phones, so you know we'll be fine. It seemed like last year um, when we had a car service, we were just so busy talking, not really paying attention to where we were going. But it didn't seem like it was that many turns or anything between going from the airport in Michigan to the retreat in Ohio. So I don't think it's going to be that bad. Um, we're going to stop at a grocery store or someplace to get some drinks and things, maybe some snacks. And I am semi-packed. Normally I don't pack until the day before and then I'm rushing around trying to get everything done for you know the family and getting everything together and finish up work, all that fun stuff. I thought now I would switch out and use my Bijou Bliss tray. And this one, look how cute this is. This is summer. I have the fall, or actually I don't have fall yet. I have spring and I have summer. Fall will not come out, so probably close to fall. And I may have already started on that one by then, but it doesn't matter because I don't use a top anyway. I just thought it looks really cute. I'm wondering if my light pad is not on the highest setting that I usually like it on because it just doesn't look that bright. I'm not sure what is going on. I think I also have a light going out in my craft room. I'm looking for an equal symbol. This one is very seldom used. Um, there it is, okay. This is actually, put this here. We went yesterday, the three of us, and looking for a house in the North Georgia mountains. We are going to move there. We're hoping within a year, if not sooner. Um, my husband is up for a position at work, and it seems like that's going to happen sooner rather than later. And so we saw one online. We, well, we saw one that we loved that was on Zillow. And so we were looking at it just you know, on Zillow and thinking that is like the perfect house for us. It looks like a cabin, which is what we want. If we're gonna be in the North Georgia mountains. And it, had, it fit all of the boxes, everything. It had a basement. It also had a really nice screened in porch and that is an absolute must for us. So, we contacted our agent and talked to her and so we asked her if that particular house was in an HOA and she said that it was there is an HOA in this one certain section where majority of the homes that we are finding are and it's in a gated community it says no HOA, and so I knew that couldn't be right because if, it wouldn't be in a gated community if it wasn't an HOA. And also, it showed pictures of a pool. It said it had riding trails, all these other things. And I had checked it out once before looking at another house, and I said, I just don't think this is what we want to get ourselves into. So then we asked her, and she was telling us all about this HOA and she said that you can have fences because that was another concern that the house we were looking at didn't have a fence. So we have to make sure that Molly, for those of you that are new or not familiar, Molly is our collie. She will be four years old in September and she loves to run. Border Collies are working class dogs and that is in her bones. She runs all day long. She chases the squirrels. She chases birds. We have chipmunks. She chases them. She chases leaves. I mean, you name it. She thinks she's hurting all of this. 
So she loves our yard. We have a pretty good sized yard and she goes from one end to the other all day long, just running. And so I knew that, you know, we're going to have to have a yard for her because she will not be happy just walking her on a leash. She's a big dog and that is just not going to happen. And I want her to, you know, be able to enjoy herself too. I'm not going to do that to her. And I want to have a yard too. So that was another thing. And when we were looking at this, she said, well, you can have a um, fence. We have to go through the board and get approval. So we started looking at this and I told Dave it would be really nice for Paige because it did have an indoor outdoor pool. I had um, horse pastures. You could rent horses and different things you could do there. I thought this would be really nice, but they have some very strict community rules. And we are very conservative anyway. It's not like we're going to have a bunch of, you know, cars on blocks or anything like that. Our house always looks nice. So I, I'm not worried about that part of it. But in, in this community, if you wanted to replant a bush, if you have a bush that died and you want to replant that bush, you cannot do anything until you go to the architectural committee and they have to review it. And if they see that you're doing something and you haven't gotten approval, then they can put a lien on your house. They can cause all kinds of problems. I lived in a community that way years and years ago when, the, when my kids were babies. And it was awful. And I swore I would never do that again. So my husband didn't like that either because he said, you know, if he wants to get out there and he wants to do something different to the yard. He doesn't want to have to wait, get approval, and then they may say no. If he wants a tree removed or even a stump, you can't do anything. And so he didn't like that idea at all. And he's never lived in an HOA, and I knew that it would not go well if um, he had gotten into it with somebody. If they would come in and say, you can't do this to your own home, that would be a problem. So I said, nope. Even though we love that house, that house is out, but we want something similar to this one. This is like a great house, good price. It was on a couple of acres, which we liked, and it was right in the heart of the mountains. Another plus plus. But it was very close to one of our campuses at work, and so I could easily go there. So that was also a plus. So we found another one. And that's the one that we went and looked at yesterday. I said, you know, it's not exactly what we wanted in the lines of how it looks, but we can, you know, we can do different things to it. But the inside, you know, looked nice. Of course, looking at pictures, we went out there and it was the trashiest, nastiest house I've ever seen, ever. And this was not an inexpensive house. It was in excess of 350000 So, and it's more than what we wanted to pay. But we thought, okay, if it is in a good area, we can pay this, you know, if we have to. But it was a, you know, very nice and a price range of a house. I don't want to be real specific, but it was not a inexpensive home. So we went there. It was an hour and 20 minute ride on a Sunday and we asked our agent, we said, you know, we can wait and look at this some other time. We don't have to do it today. You know, it's a Sunday. I know you're tired. It's going to be late in the afternoon um, because it's going to take us an hour and a half to get there. And so she's like, oh, no problem. I'll be glad to do it, you know, today if you want to go see this. And she said, I hadn't seen this one either. So we take off, we go, Paige goes with us, we get there. We look at the outside. I immediately, as we're about to pull into the driveway, I look at the sign and I told my husband, I said, do you realize so-and-so is selling this? And he said, I just saw that. And I said, well, I was looking on Zillow. I did not see that. I didn't notice that at all. And so he said he didn't either. Well, this so-and-so agent is very he's a very popular agent but 
We've been to several of his homes in the past. They are all trashy. They're all run down. The people usually are gone and they just leave an absolute mess. The house needs tons of work. He doesn't tell them to do anything. And the just the outside of it, I'm like, this is absolutely nasty. And my husband's like, yeah, but it's just the yard. We can get the, we can clean the yard up. We can, you know, if we like the house, we could get landscapers to come in and clean it up for us. We wouldn't even have to do it. I'm like, okay, well that, that makes sense. So then I thought I'm willing to do that. We go in, I walk in this place and I like gag. I said, what is that awful, awful smell? And our agent had just got there and she's like, well, it's evident that this homeowner had dogs. And I said, that's not just a dog smell. I have a dog. I had multiple dogs. I said, but now we just have one dog. My house has never, ever in my entire life smelled like that. I said, that is not just dog. That is more than dog. It is filth. And it is just like nasty food or something. And then I told my husband, I said, it's almost as if it smells like pot in here. It just does not smell right. And so my husband's like, yeah, this house, there's something going on with this house. The, the more we looked at it, the more I'm like, mm -mm, I'm just doing this as a courtesy because our agent, you know, was willingly nice enough to meet us there, you know, on a Sunday late afternoon. And we looked at it and I told my husband, there's no way. I cannot believe they would ask this much money for this house. It was just filthy, gross, just dirty. Fireplace looked like it had logs in it that had been there for ages. It looked just disgusting. They said that it was newly, newly painted. I'm like, what in the world was newly painted? Because there was writings all over the wall. There was dirt and filth on the wall. Then we looked outside and they had a porch. It wasn't screened in, but it was covered. And it was just nasty, dirty with a, t a table on it that was falling apart. The doors had dog prints all over them, just in just dirt. And the screens were hanging on to the door. So I told my husband, I'm like, I don't even want to go upstairs. They didn't have any AC in the house on whatsoever so it was even worse because it was 95 degrees yesterday and I started looking around I'm like okay well um this window this window this window is busted and it clearly says on Zillow all of the windows they were all brand new and I'm like well if it's brand new then they should have a warranty on these because they've got several windows that have holes in them there were gunshot holes that were in the walls upstairs. And then we went, we looked at the downstairs basement, and they said this will be perfect for a mother-in-law suite or a roommate situation. And I thought, well, that'd be great. We could have Paige in her own little place. This is before we went into this house. Then we go into the house. I'm looking around. I tell my husband, there is no way my child is going to stay down here in this mess. And there's no way that anybody can, the way that it was set up. And he's like, no, I totally agree. Then they had refrigerators in some of the weird places. They had a refrigerator in the bathroom. And I told my husband, I said, I'm scared to open this because no telling what's in it. And he's like, I wouldn't open that if I were you. And so we didn't. But then there was another refrigerator that was outside and it looked like it had been there for years and years. And so my husband was like, I'm sure not going to open that one. And so our agent made a funny comment. She's like, there could be a dead body in there. And I'm like, you know, that wouldn't surprise me if there was like some kind of animal or something in there. And I, I was just, well, I couldn't wait to get out of there. But actually, we did not, we did not waste our time going to the mountains because we looked around we um saw some places that you know we liked we wanted to see what all was around there and 
then I told my husband, I said, well, go down this street. And I said, there's, it's pointing towards, there's, um, it says it's pointing towards a little cafe down here. So we went down there and then I started recognizing different landmarks. And so I told him to go different, a couple different ways. And he said, I hope you don't get us lost back through here. And then we passed right by one of our campuses at school. And I said, this is the one that I go to quite often, at least three or four times a year when I have different seminars and things to do. And I said, so that's good to know that one of our campuses is that close. So my boss has already told me that I could transfer to that one if I wanted to. And I said, that is just really good. I want to see, you know, what some back roads are over here. Because the way that we went to that one house, we went all over. And we didn't need to. But that's what GPS gave us. And so I was showing my husband different back ways that I had found that different people that have told me that work in that area. And so we just went driving around and we um, went by, it was um, a ice cream shop. We stopped in and we got some ice cream. So we had a nice day all in all, but I just could not believe when I got in the car, I could not wait to use hand sanitizer. And Paige was with us and I said, use hand sanitizer, use it, just put it all over your hands. And, you know, your arms and even your legs. I and mean, I was just, I had baby wipes in the car. And she's like, I think you're a little excessive. And Dave agreed with her. And I'm like, mm -mm, that place was nasty. I know telling what kind of stuff we might have been touching. And really, I told her, I said, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything in this house. We're just looking. So we really were careful. But it was just awful. And our agent acts like it was no big deal. She said, well, you know, I've been in worse ones than these. And I'm like, I just don't get it. I don't see how. And I don't understand how someone that is well known in the community would put his name, their name on a sign in front of a house that looks that skanky. Because it was really, really bad. It was a nice looking house if it had been taken care of but it obviously hasn't and my husband said you know even if we were to consider this house and we would have to come down a lot from what they're asking because it's going to take a lot to get this house fixed back up he said um and we could get you know some people to you know so we'd get some contractors to help or whatnot but he said even doing that I don't know what is behind the walls. And we've had that problem before at another house that we purchased that we thought we're going to do this as a flip. And that didn't work so well for us. And so we decided after that, no, our flipping days are over. We're not going to, to do that anymore. And we um, almost lost quite a bit of money on that house, but we ended up making just a little or breaking even. It was, I think we broke even. My husband thinks we may have, we may have earned a couple thousand dollars, but I don't think so. And every time that we were going to do something, we found something else wrong with that house. Even having it inspected, we found a lot of problems because once we had to open up the walls, we saw things that it was covered up. So we were afraid if we can see things that's just out here in the open, no telling what's going to be behind the walls. And then the smell made me really nervous too, because we had neighbors that lived across from us, not at our house now, but at a former house, and they were cooking meth. We don't know that they were, but we pretty much knew that they were. And we even called and reported them and we had um, people go and look and they, somehow they were protected. It was all ignored and what I could smell from my back porch smelled like part of that house. And so I'm like, eh, nope, we're not doing this. I don't feel comfortable with this house and it's not what I wanted anyway it, because it was too large. The kitchen was very, very tiny. I didn't like that. And I didn't like the fact that the, the way that the kitchen was made, it was just so, so small. 
but I do want a smaller house. A house was larger, but they just did not put their, when they built that house, the square footage in the right places, basically. The rooms were really small, and it just was not something that we were interested in. But our agent now knows what we're looking for. But of course, I told her we are looking from this amount to this amount. If it goes under, that's great. But this is the maximum amount that we're looking for. And then she was sending me things yesterday that was thirty, forty, you know, sixty thousand dollars more than what our maximum amount was. And it was in HOAs on some. And like I told her, we did not want an HOA. Maybe she's just sending us things hoping that you know, we'll go ahead and that we will consider it. And that's why I don't like to use agents is because of the fact that you tell them what you want and then they'll send you anything hoping that you will go. Now the one that we went to yesterday, that was all on us because we were the ones that found this and said to her, you know, have you seen this one? Do you know anything about it? And she said, no, I don't know anything about that one. Well, if she would have said, but I just want to forewarn you that so-and-so is selling this house, has listed this house. And I would say, Oop, nope, not interested. And I don't know why that I overlooked it when I was looking on Zillow and Redfin yesterday. Because I, once we got home, I looked. It was clearly on there. I just did not see it. So I'm going to be more careful next time. And... I knew something was up whenever we got there, and I'm like, I really don't even want to go in. And Dave said, well, we have to give her the courtesy. You know, she came out here. We need to at least give her the courtesy, and maybe the inside will be better. And I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. And so he just kind of laughed. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm trying to be positive. And then once we saw her, and she said, well, I hope you don't mind um, elbow grease because you're going to need a lot of it talking about that we were going to have to do a lot of cleaning before we could even consider doing anything else. And so I'm like, oh, why? Why us? But sometimes you have to find, go through some horrible homes before you find the right one. That's what we experienced with the house that we're in now. We looked and we looked and we looked. And I was just getting really tired of looking. We had to get out of that other house. And we found this one. And I like this one, okay where we are now um but it wasn't what I was looking for but I thought well if we can we can go ahead and make this work I'm not doing that again we have already discussed exactly what we're looking for and if we don't get exactly what we want if we can come close to it and we can make the other requirements that we want if we can make them work whether it's my husband doing the work or we hire contractors, then as long as that can be done and not spend an exorbitant amount to do that, then we'll consider it. But like with this house, my husband said, oh yeah, we can get a covered um, porch, a deck, and we can just use a deck that we're using now. We have now, we can, you know, it shouldn't be that bad. We can just make it look longer. And then we started looking into it, and we were getting quotes of sixty thousand and up. Started out with thirty-five thousand, and then all of a sudden it started blowing up to sixty, sixty-five thousand for a very small deck. And so, whenever we were about to leave, our agent said, "Is a screened-in porch an absolute must?" And so my husband kind of looked at me. I said, "Yeah, it is." That's what I want. I'm not backing down on this one because on our last two houses, this one and the house before, the one where we were going to flip it and it ended up becoming an absolute disaster, we had planned on having a screened in deck there too and we weren't able to do it. So I don't want to say, yeah, we can do it and then turn around and no, we can't. So that if we get a house we really like it but it does not have a screened in deck or it doesn't have an undercover deck then as part of the contingency on our contract I'm going to put that we are going to have x amount of days to get with a contractor and to see how much it's going to cost 
for that deck. And then we'll make our decision. And we can do that now because the housing market's not like it was when we were looking for this house or for the other house. We would have to put in a bid that was that same day that a house became available and you had to put in a bid for an amount that was quite a bit higher than what the asking price was or you were going to lose out on that house. And we found that out really quickly. And the houses that are in the mountains do not sell as quickly as that. Some do sell within 30 days or so, but it's not immediate. So that is one thing that I think is going to be a plus for us this time. And another plus is that we're not in a hurry because my husband still has to drive back and forth to work. And that's going to be a longer drive than what he's doing now. So we decided that if it does happen and he has to drive to where he is now, then he'll just have to stay somewhere a couple of days a week so he doesn't have to drive as much. And he is all for it. So we've just been talking, trying to decide what we're going to do and if we're going to we're going to do it now or later. And it was good to be able to go and see what exactly was out there. And also to remember to be more diligent and see who has their name on the for sale sign. Because that was a dead ringer. I should have known better. I've never gone into one of those houses that wasn't just a disaster. And most agents will tell you, you need to make sure your house is really clean. If it's really cluttered or dirty, if it smells, then people are going to walk in and they're going to walk right back out. But he doesn't care. And somehow he is one of the very top agents in this area. I don't understand that. I just, I don't know. I don't get it. But that was our fun day yesterday. So I didn't get to diamond paint yesterday hardly at all. I had work that I had to get done. So I was doing that, trying to get everything done before I leave. And I just didn't have much time to diamond paint all week either. So I've gotten a little behind on this cutie. I was hoping to be done with the Summer Dragon by the end of June. But that's not going to happen now. So I've got the row I'm working on now, which I'm close to finishing, about halfway done, I guess. And then I have the next row down, and then that second row will be the start of fall. I am trying really hard to get this one done. I have so many others I want to work on. Let's see, I need to get another color, and let's go with something a little more brighter, which really we're not in a bright section. Let's go with a with a B. And I'm sorry for having my hands going all across the screen here, but it's the way I have to have my drills because of how I have to have this huge diamond painting. It's almost time for me to fill up my containers. Only to do that too soon. I don't know if I'll get any diamond painting done tomorrow. I do want to work on my other one that I normally do with you guys and that is the mermaid and I am I finished another row I just started on a the third row I believe it is but I just haven't had a chance to get back to that one either so I am trying I'm trying to get some things done I do have another video that will be coming out on Saturday. It is a very small completion. And that will get me until the end of June. Then the end of June, when I come back, I will have my month in review. And we'll see how far I've gotten or how far I haven't gotten on the retreat. Because a retreat last year, I thought, oh, I'm going to get so much done. I'm going to have all this time to diamond paint. I don't have to worry about cooking. I don't have to worry about going anywhere. I don't have to worry about Paige, making sure that she's okay. And 
she doesn't need anything or she wants to come down and talk while I'm trying to dye and paint. And I thought, I'm going to get so much done. I got two rows done last year. And that was from Thursday evening until Saturday night. Which is kind of sad because the rows were kind of small. They weren't very large rows either. But I didn't just diamond paint. I would stop, I would talk to people, I'd walk around, see what others were doing. Um, and feel, it seems like we were always eating. And I'm good with that too. But we'll see how much I get done this year. Probably not a lot because I'm sure I'll be talking to more people. I've gotten to know more people now in the community than I knew last year. And then, of course, Rhonda and I sat in a different place last year, kind of by ourselves because the lights um, were bothering us where we were originally sitting. So we really didn't have any table mates. And so this year, it's going to be Rhonda and Kim and myself, and then I'm not sure who Rhonda is rooming with, so they may be with us, and we're going to sit at a table that I think has six, six seats, so we will be talking to more people, and I'm not going there, it's my expectations, you know, to go there and get a lot done, that is not my expectation at all. Hoping to get some done, but if I don't, well, I've got the rest of the summer to work on it. Which isn't exactly true, because I do have to work. Let's see. I'm trying to get some of these darker colors that's just around the dragon's body. Go over here. There's another one there, and then one over here. I need to put another glue dot in, too. And I really am trying not to because I don't have to fight the glue dot for the rest of this video. I need to take Molly and get her groomed. She needs it so desperately. And she's starting to scratch. So I um, figured that when she starts scratching really bad, then she's getting itchy. And it's time to give her her bath. And she needs to be cut down again. Collies have a lot of hair. I did take her down quite a bit with her last cut. But she has grown out so much that she needs another haircut. It's only been less than a month. She has, she's already had a bath. She gets a bath here, and then I also have them bathe her there, but I use the, I use the shampoo that, you know, it's designed for dogs. It's very, for sensitive skin. She's never having problems, so I don't think that it's the shampoo I'm using. I just think she's hot and itchy. I guess that's all the large bees that I'm seeing. So now I gotta change colors again. The summer dragon, or the summer season, is taking me longer than the spring did. I'm not sure why, but I've heard that from other people too, that the spring took them a little bit longer. And I'm good with that. I'm just trying to count up how long it's going to take me to finish this entire canvas. And so my time keeps getting adjusted because it's taking me longer. I'm starting to worry because I had hand surgery about four years ago, I guess. And it's starting to hurt again pretty bad. But a different spot on my hand. And... The surgeon said that next time, if I have to have the surgery again, then he's going to have to fuse my thumb. And that doesn't sound very good. But the pain is starting to bother me so bad. I've lost a lot of mobility in my left wrist because of it. And it's just arthritis is all that it is. 
So not much they can really do. And now my right hand is starting to do just a little bit of a tingle like how my left hand did. And I think I'm getting carpal tunnel now on my right. So I've got to try and be really careful when I die and paint, take breaks, make sure I'm stretching my hand. You know, the stuff that's not fun. Let's see, I guess I've done all of that one. Let's see what other color I can come up with. Like this one I can do, this one is over here. Oh, these turned around wrong too. That doesn't exactly help. Like this one is that one. Definitely need to fill up my bottle. This color is very popular on this canvas. It's um, 307. It's one of the more popular yellows that's on this canvas. Constantly using it. I think I've already filled the bottles up two or three times. Let's see, I don't have any over here. I have, I have any over there either. Some down here. Make sure you can still see. You can if I move the tray. I know most of you do not watch when you're watching videos. You don't sit and watch feathers die and paint. But there are some that I was surprised that actually like to just sit, listen, and watch. Which now it gives me kind of a complex thinking other people are watching me. It is what it is. I'm actually able to multi-place more and talk, so that's a good thing. Because I do like my multi-placing. So I'm just going to off. I do enjoy to multi-place. The kit that I'm taking on the retreat is going to be a lot of multi-placing. That's a lot of color blocking. Molly is outside. That is the bark pointing that there is a cat that's going in through our yard. It's funny how I can tell what each bark means. She's one of the few dogs that I've ever had that actually has different barks for different things. Our last colleague had the same bark and the same wine for everything. So you didn't know if she needed to go out, if she was hungry. You didn't have any idea what she wanted. But Molly has very distinct with what she wants. And my canvas just unrolled onto my lap. So now I've got all the success in my lap. I have a feeling that this canvas is going to be extremely heavy once I'm done with it. It's a lot of drills on here. A lot of drills. My husband was asking me, and I don't know why, I thought it was kind of weird, because he never asked anything about my diamond painting. But he's asking, we were sitting outside, and he said, how many of the drills are on your Elizabeth painting? I'm like, I don't know. And that was one of the first ones that I did. And I said, yeah, I don't really have any idea. I can go and look and see if I can find it. And so I found... One that was about the same size as Elizabeth, and it was like 38,000 drills. And he said, that sounds like a lot. And then I was like, I can't imagine just sitting there doing that for that many drills. 
I said, well, just think about the one I'm working on now, the one that you have motivated me to get this finished. Think about how many drills is going to be on that one. And I hadn't looked it up yet, and I can calculate it. I always have to look up and remember how to do it. But now I'm curious how many is going to be on here. That will flip his mind. Let's see. One, two, three. I'm still working on my Paint Gem Minis, the Museum Edition. I've done about six of those, I believe. And that's going to be for Summer with the Masters. I just did not want to do a large painting on top of this one. So decided I'll go ahead and I will do that one. And it's worked out really well. I've been doing that at night. So that's been nice because I sure don't want to take this one out. And the other one I have taken out, the mermaid, took it outside. It's still not the easiest to do. Especially now we've got a fan going. And the fan is pretty, it's pretty loud outside, which that doesn't matter. I can still diamond paint. But it's pretty forceful too. So if I'm not careful my canvas is going to fly off of my of my lap tray my little lap desk and that has happened okay let me see if i have any more of these i'm going to go too far out of range here and you guys can't see I'm not doing any events in July. I'm just trying to get paintings that I need done or that I want done, done. So I won't be doing anything. I probably will do something in September, October. That's when the holidays start kicking off. I'm not going to do a daily video in December. I've done that for the past two years and decided I'm not going to do that again. It's a lot of work and it starts off really good and then it just ends to where there's not very many people watching it because it's the holidays. And then I have to figure out what I'm going to say, what I'm going to work on. So I'm just going to do regular videos from now until the end of the year. Oh, wow. I'm going to have to stop and put glue dot on here, and I really don't want to. And then I'll have to fight it. All right, let's see. I've been really good this week. Haven't purchased anything. Really didn't purchase that much in June. And nothing in May. So that is really good for me. Let me see how long we've been talking. Oh, good. Okay. When I am done with this video, I'm going to go and grab some lunch. We ended up going to one of our favorite restaurants last night on the way home. And from, from looking at the house, and we went and had Mexican, we had a lot left over. So I'm going to eat my leftovers today for lunch. Paige had to work today since I'm not going to be home. So I have to go pick her up in just a little bit. I've already had a shower, so that's definitely a plus. I did stop for a little while on this video to go and take her to work, dropped her off. And then when I fin after I finish lunch, then I've got 
two more videos that I want to do. I'd like to get one more done today and then one done tomorrow if possible. If you don't see a video on Saturday, that means I ran out of time and I did not get it done. Even if I can just get it filmed, then while I am sitting there at the airport bored to death and waiting on my flight, I know I'm going to have a couple hours I'm going to have to to fill up with some time and I can edit because I'm taking my computer with me. So that will definitely be a plus if I decided to do that or I will just work on stuff that I've got going on for work which is a lot that's going to be coming up in July. I would like to get a head start and go ahead and get it finished. Now I'm in a lot of confetti. This one actually I could do color blocking on some of this. And I have to say, even as large as this canvas is, I'm not getting bored with it yet. You know, ask me that in the next four months. I might be hoping to be done by then. But we shall see. I know this video is going to be just a little bit shorter than what I normally do. I do have to make some phone calls today. I'm hoping to talk to my half-sister. I found out yesterday from my aunt, who is my dad's sister, that my stepmother passed away yesterday. And I don't know any information She's been really sick. She has been under hospice care. I do know that she just passed away in her sleep. And just like my dad did. Exactly like he did. And so I know that my sister has been really torn up about it. I'm hoping that she will be able to call me today. She had a friend of hers call me last night. And we've known him for a number of years. He's good friends with the family, was good friends with my dad and my stepmother. So if you could just keep my sister and your thoughts, that would be greatly appreciated. That was her mom. We had the same dad, different moms, and she was her caregiver for a number of years. And she also was a caregiver for my dad even though my dad still works full time, he still needs some help. He quit driving a while back. And so she took him to all of his doctor's appointments, anything that he needed. And she was there, you know, during the pandemic with them. She lives down the street from them. She ended up staying there for a long time. So this Last year and this year has just really hit her super hard, and I am okay. Um, she, my stepmother and I, she was my stepmother for 50 years, which is just hard to believe, but I was in my dad and stepmother's wedding. I was a little, little, a little bit low then, and you know, that was my kid's grandmother. They did not treat her like a step-grandmother. That was their grandmother. And so it's hit my kids hard too. Not as hard as I thought that it would, which I'm glad. But I think they had made their peace with it when they saw her last year at my dad's. When we had his home-going ceremony. And they will be together. So that's definitely a plus. I truly do believe that. They will be together again. And she has been miserable without my dad. So I think this time she just decided that it was time. And she just went to sleep last night and didn't. Or what night was it? What's today? Today's Monday. She went to sleep on Saturday night and did not wake up on Sunday morning. 
I found out about five o'clock yesterday and we were still in the mountains and she had passed away, I think at nine o'clock that morning. So I'm not sure what all this is going to entail. It will be a while before my sister does anything. So it's been a rather hard couple of years. But we are all good here. I'm still going to the retreat. I think it's going to change from that because nothing's going to be done by then anyway. I can't do anything else and I'm not part of that. That's all my sister planning and everything. And everything was already planned anyway a long time ago. I did get to speak to my aunt and uncle yesterday, so that was nice. Not the best circumstances to speak to them, but it's always nice when I get to connect with my family, which we're all over the place, so it's not always easy to do. As far as what I am reading, I started listening actually to an audiobook, Secrets in Death by J. Rob. It's number 40 something. And I'm slowly getting there. I've been doing this for years and years. I'll get on the kick where I'm going to listen to it. And then I will drop back for a while. But um, I'm getting caught up on that one. And I have my headphones I'm taking with me. So I'll just sit in the airport and listen to my audiobook. As far as reading, I'm reading a new Riley Sager book. I cannot remember the name of it. It was a book of the month. And it started off good so far. I mean, I'm only in like page, on page 50-ish. So really just have started on that one. Paige went on Saturday with her dad. He got her a big stack of books. I think she's gotten like 10 books. And so that'll keep her occupied for about a month or so, maybe a month and a half. And then she's going to run out of books again. So that's when it'll be my turn next time to take her to the bookstore. I hope that you enjoyed this video. That's all that I really have for you today. I want to go ahead and get this uploaded so I'll make sure that it gets out on Tuesday. And with me being on a crazy time crunch, I'll make sure I have plenty of time to edit. Sometimes it takes me a little bit longer on some videos than it does on others when I go through editing. And I am sure that Molly is ready to go outside. Thanks so much again for joining me. And until next time, happy diamond painting. Bye.